Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the 1973 podcast, episode two, not Mr. Wrestling 2, not the two count like Tommy Young would do, but the second episode. So hopefully uh, we'll get rolling with this and try to do it, like I said, at least uh, once a week or every other week, depending on what's going on. So uh, I'm here again with Ed and Tom, and uh, we're just trying to catch up this week before we went on the air, what we wanted to do. And uh, I want to uh, acknowledge, uh, Ed, you've got a, a new uh, fitness venture that uh, you recently went into. You want to uh, bring us up on that? Kind of cool. I saw it. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, as we all know, that uh, it took me a minute or two to graduate from college. Uh, you know, <laughs> most people were uh, doctors by the time they, they got out of school. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so I, I all so you I came out was work. with uh, instead of a PhD, all you had was VD. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, good. I hope that's going to hit the edit floor. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I so I started. I I got certified as a personal trainer um, about three years ago, and then due to COVID and everything like that, that kind of uh, clamped down on actually expanding on that. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I had the opportunity to recertify and actually start personal training again. Uh, so it was an incredible uh, opportunity, and uh, working for a really good guy down here. Uh, his name is Brantley Ellison. Good people, um, and with with you know, and he's uh, got a really good following down here. So I'm very happy be part of that team that's a good much. plug you get a good plug in there maybe they'll uh bring that up at the review <laughs> <laughs> or if you walk or if you walk in next time and you're fired you know why i don't want to be right, part yeah. of that yeah <laughs> tom what's new what's going on anything good or anything uh noteworthy not much except i'm tearing my house apart <laughs> just just replastered it i just put up uh, sheetrock and replastered the dining room okay so not sleep, not sleeping outside anymore. No, no, no more outside sleeping. This old, this old house with Tom Brown. Oh my God! <laughs> this First old thing, brown house. Don't ever buy a hundred-year-old house. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, first thing I uh, wanted to talk about this week was uh, the NHL trade deadline. It seems like uh, everything's revolving around the Patrick Kane trade, and everything's really uh, kind of crazy with the amount of. Uh, picks guys are giving up i saw that tampa bay deal where they gave up a first round a second round to nashville it was crazy 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 yeah. i don't know what, yeah yeah i don't i don't know like if tampa bay is going to be in the situation that uh you know like chicago's in now like a few years from now that they'll just they don't have anything and you know cap issues and this that and the other thing but uh like we were talking about before we uh Started going here that um, my call is Patrick Kane by Friday will be on, but probably late Friday will be on the ranges when they, you know, hide all this money and launder it and, you know, give contract. I think Gretzky's still on the books there. They'll probably trade Gretzky to, to Phoenix just to move money like they like to do. I, I mean, they, Shea Weber hasn't played in what, two seasons and he's now he's on the Coyotes. It's, it's crazy. I, I can't understand it. Every conversation I have with, you know, people that are love it, they just don't understand how the way the cap works. And I, I, I don't even want to try to, you know, learn how to do it. And, you know, just, it just blows my mind. Like some of these teams have these mystery salary caps and they say they're under the cap, but I don't know how they do it. I really don't know. Sneaky. Yeah. Uh, the oh, range. Oh, go ahead, Tom. I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I think Kane's got them by the cajones because he he's he said who he has a no trade clause. Right. They, they had a deal worked out with Vegas and he turned it down. He wants to go to the Rangers. Everybody wants Rangers, and I know he wants to go there. I'm not giving up a first round pick for him. I'm going yeah. to try to lowball them. And I think if he really wants to play somewhere, if if he really wants to go there, he's going to he'll they're going to have to give up less. I think. So we we have a. A buddy of ours that's a big Blackhawks fan, right? We all yes. we don't we all know who it is. So of course he's he's telling me the same thing that it's exactly what I was going through with Giroux last year. You know, you you're waiting and it's like a distraction and you don't mm -hmm. want to see him go because they're on the cusp of breaking like the franchise records, you know. And you hit that thousandth game, then he goes. 
He goes to Florida. He could have went to Colorado, chose Florida, thinking that he was going to pull like a chemo team in and go right to a cup. And it didn't work out like that. And then he goes home to Ottawa. So is, is this going to be the thing where is he going there just because they're so cup heavy this year? The Rangers with Truba. Now, now they got, uh, you know, um, they just made the deal for Tarasenko. So does he stay there after this year or does he go somewhere else? What, what do you think, Tom? I think, I think he's going to go there one way or the other, but the East is so tough. There's no guarantee. They meet, they even make it out of the first round right now. Imagine that. Imagine that. It's uh, so do you think he stays though? If he goes to the Rangers, do you think when he, I I think you, yeah, I think he'll sign. I think that's where he wants to be. I think he'll sign. I don't think he'll sign long-term, but I think maybe a two-year deal. And finish there, finish over there. I don't know. Uh, Other than now the allure of it's New York city. I don't see, I don't see any real appeal of playing that. That's just, that's just me. Call me a Flyers fan, but I, I don't, I don't see the, the allure of playing for the Rangers, but whatever. That that's me. Ed, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> I want to touch on the the Tampa thing first. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it is just that you know the NHL is really different than um you know whether it be the NFL, um that type of thing. I mean, typically draft picks don't step right out onto the ice and 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 get ready to play at you know eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. I mean, there there are exceptions, of course, but. You know, I, I think that, you know, Tampa has been kind of proven that they know how to kind of wheel and deal and, and that type of thing. So getting rid of, a, you know, a, you know, a couple ones or a couple twos or a combination of both really, you know, you know, I mean, it just forces the scouts to probably be a little bit better on, on how, you know, who and how they draft and what their needs are going to be, you know, in the next few years, you know. Yeah, um, I, I know Patrick, that everybody's all hyped up about the draft with Bedard, but what what's not to say that, He's small and he ends up being a bust. You know, who knows? I mean, right. it, it's rare that you come into the league and be like a Crosby or a McDavid with, with so much hype coming out of it that you actually right. are that guy. Cause there's a whole list of guys that were drafted number one and you could rattle them off right back yeah. to Alexander Digg is my, my go-to with that. I mean, the league wasn't wanted down yet. He, he had this big, fanfare coming out he was one of the first guys i ever remember having a you know uh sponsored by i think it was ccm before he even turned pro and you know ended up being nothing absolutely nothing so i don't know if it's too much too soon or they can't handle the pressure look at uh jack hughes um you know jack hughes right yeah he's finally yeah. playing but it took him like three or four years but he's yeah. finally starting to play well but like yeah. you talk about that look at lafreniere yeah I mean, Yep, that's where I was going next. Yeah. And now he's he's in a good situation because of the team around him, so it, the spotlight's not on him as much to, yeah, you know, kind of produce. But it, it, still, you when you're drafted number one, that the kid that's two and three must be saying, see, I told you. And then look at Shane Wright last year. Drop yeah. all the way down, and now you, you can barely crack an NHL lineup. It, it's crazy. I mean, just imagine what goes on behind the scenes that you don't even know that the media knows that they don't let out about these guys, some of these guys, you know, whether they have issues, whether they're, you know, prima donnas, who knows, who knows. And I mean, the NFL's had it with tons of guys, tons of guys, you know, we, not so much like Bosworth, but uh, so many guys. Uh, what was it? Uh, Lawrence Phillips there from that the Rams had, he was yeah. like the next big thing. And all these other guys that, you know, Tom, you probably, you know, picked up with the football and add two after I stopped watching it. But there's so many guys that have been drafted. Number one, that of Tony Mandarich, all these guys, right? Yeah. That never ended up being anything. Yep. So you got to be careful with the, with the whole draft thing. Thoughts. Well, I mean, just, and then to finish up the whole thing, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I have a little bit of a different opinion about going to play it, you know, at Madison Square Garden, I think it'd be, you know, I mean, there is there is the appeal to, uh, you know, playing in the big city, you know, and I mean, because you can go and you can be a superstar and a millionaire in New York City and you can walk down the, the sidewalk and nobody recognizes, you know. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, I mean, so, you know, and I mean, it's, it's, you know, at least 
you know, stay in the original six and that type of thing. But I mean, you know, it's a business and and they all know that oh. they're commodities and that type of thing, their product. So, you know, there's no loyalty anymore and they never really used to be no. either. So, no. you know, no, I, I think they mimic the NBA so much now with that stuff. Um, as far as like the fruit, the way the free agency goes. And it's, it's sad because, you know, you want, you want to think that that's still the one loan sport that's still connected to, you know, the, being old school and it's, it's terrible sometimes the way, you know, it, it's treated and they want to add more teams. So, you know, they won't be happy till there's international teams outside of the country. And these guys got to travel to, you know, Sweden or Finland or, or one of those other places, uh, Australia. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's where we're going, right? It is an uh, yeah. Australian team, uh, uh, Australian game next yep. year. So, Austin. yeah, yeah. But Boston. I just don't. I, I just don't think. I, and this is just my personal opinion. I, I just don't understand why you're going to expand that much. You can't even put fantasy in the seats with what you got now. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know? Oh yeah. You know, so why are you going to expand? It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. If it circle back to what we talked about last week about about the Coyotes, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, we, we went to a tournament a um, month or two back in January, and uh, my son had never been to an NHL game. And, you know, the ticket prices for around here are ridiculous. Crazy. But we ended up getting into the, you know, to see the Canadians in Nashville in Montreal for $42 a ticket. Nice. I mean, we were in the nosebleeds, but we got in for cheap money. So it, it is doable in other places. It's just a matter of, of the price gouging. I mean, it's. That's a nice place to go for your first game. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, not that I'm a big Canadians guy or whatever, but they put on a show. I'm telling you in between periods, they got a DJ and a techno and it's like being out. You know, they got that European flavor when you go up there and I, and I just, of course. I, you got the, you got the perfect Jersey on for my next comment and how that's the team right there. In Quebec with that. That type of uh, fan base up there that they would just do so well again if they brought them back. They would do just like the Jets. I mean, they would do so well, and that's that's a whole nother, whole nother yeah, argument. Yeah. You know, with the with you know, like we were talking about last week about expansion versus nostalgia versus what they had, what they lost, where teams went, greed, the whole deal. You know, Minnesota North Stars leave, go to Dallas, but you put another team back there again, mm-hmm. and then Atlanta's a two-time loser. It's, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But uh, now we get to move on, and let's talk some wrestling. We didn't get a chance to talk any wrestling last week. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's that's a core group. That's a core thing, you know, goes back to the childhood and everything, and uh, for people that don't know, we're, we're not uh, newbies when it comes to this stuff. I mean, uh, I started watching in 77 and pretty much never stopped. So I've been watching wrestling before there was cable. <laughs> and, and, and I like to, I'm not a, a mega historian, but I can pretty hold my own on a trivia contest going going back. So um, what I, what I want to talk about first and, you know, the AEW phenomenon that's going on right now. So they're three years in. I want to get your thoughts. You can guys could start however you want, but thoughts on AEW going forward. What what uh initial thoughts up till now? Go ahead, go old school. Yeah. Yo yo yo. Let me speak on this. <laughs> All right. Well, so I started watching AEW about a year ago, right? Um. You know, uh, I, I love the fact that they put on a great show every Wednesday night. Um, they put stuff on national TV that, you know, WWE wouldn't put on regular TV. They, they'd save it for the pay-per-view, which I think is wonderful. Um, I, you know, coming from my background and, you know, and we'll just in the corporate world, um, you know, the way that they do their, their, um, their advertising man it just wrecks it just wrecks it there's a better way to do it and i think for me that really just kind of slows the night down and it really you know they have good commentators they have good talent but they're not grooming the talent the way that they should you know and the bookers are not bookers that are looking you know six months to a year down the line i mean 
my last little point here is if you watch the thing on A and E about NWO is, you know, and the whole thing between Hogan and Sting. I mean, Bischoff said, not one of my most favorite person in the wrestling biz- wrestling business. However, he's like, we're gonna do a twelve month build on this. And I feel like the AEW doesn't build like that. It's you know, they had some guys, um, the the gigantic dude that had the neck problem, um name escapes me. But last year when I first started watching Andy uh, the, big, was it the King, I think. Big guy with the neck problem. Yeah. Uh, bald head. I mean just get a bald head. Yeah. I'm trying to think what anyway. we're oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll think anyway. That. But uh you know the thing about it is is just like that's somebody that, you know, really, you know, um if Vince had him, um I think Vince would really have groomed him, you know, kind of like something like, you know, more along like the Macho Man or Hogan or the Ultimate Maniac, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, overall, I think it's a good product. I think it's really just tough to go up against WWE because the production that WWE has oh. is just fantastic, well, and, and you can't compete with that. It, it, before yeah. I get Tom's take on it, their their ratings are dwindling. It, it it's crazy because they got a big big pop when CM Punk came back. I mean, he added like got them over they were always under a million fans but he got them over a million fans now they're back under that and what ends up happening is they they start off with a core group of people when they go on the air at eight and a lot of the people watch the big bang reruns that are on right before it and kind of stay to see what the first match is going to be right and their format getting back to how you were saying that the picture in picture thing is I can't awful. stand it. Dude. Awful. It's terrible. It's awful. Um, I think they give too much to the wrong people on that show. You, it, they give you. I like the the old school matches with the blood, but too much gimmick. They put a. It's like um, you don't wear a hat and then put another hat on top of it. You, you too many tables and chairs. It's too, it's too much. Their their storytelling is awful. Yeah, yeah. The, the best storyteller they had on the on the entire roster, they lost Cody Rhodes. It, yep. I mean, that that's another subject I want to get into is his road to WrestleMania oh. and his return and the story and the Dusty and you know I'm a Dusty guy and you know kicks him all too. that yeah our times into, baby our times. yeah yeah and you know. I, Speaking of that, people don't even realize that that's not even his best promo. That's just his most famous mm-hmm. promo. That yeah, he's yeah. had better promos than that. Oh, I agree. But that's the one that everybody knows. But anyway, yeah, so yeah. before I go off on a rant, um, if they're not careful, they'll be WCW. You know, yeah, they because yeah. they he's too much of a mock for his product he's like a rich kid playing with wrestling figures it's and like he should not be a poker. right right and he, from things that i've heard you have guys that have approached the younger talent and said hey listen i can i give you some advice about your match or can i critique your promo or can i tell you give you some advice and a lot of the younger guys have said, I'm almost that dude. I don't, I don't need any. Yeah. I don't yeah. Need... So just the old school mentality is slowly fading away. And I don't know if wrestling will be watchable when the old school mentality is gone. Yeah. yeah. Not to sound like an old man, but yeah, it's like you are anything else. It's like society. It's like a picture of society where they think they know it. All these young kids think they already know everything and they don't want to listen. Right. That's what's happening. And it's, it's, pull- pouring over into wrestling it's the same thing how is it that somebody like mjf can come out and not have a match and get a bigger reaction from a crowd than somebody that did a 360 off the top rope into a table that's on fire that's got a garbage can on top of it with live piranhas underneath it with light bulbs and it's all it is it's it's it's, uh, mannerisms and being able to talk on the mic that's that's almost as important as wrestling right uh whether you you know, I say this to a lot of people and, you know, when people start saying what, you know, they, they roll their eyes with the wrestling. So my, my take on that is the Marvel movies, when they come out, 
millions and millions and millions of people go to the theater to, to see the next <laughs> part of the saga. Sure. That, sh that shit's not real either. So why, you gotta, why do you get a foo foo? Me. Yeah, no, I, I know it's a, Ed. I, get some tissues. You might get upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the eyes. Get, a so, little, get a little misty here, man. Whew. So for the people that always crap on the wrestling, lighten up. Lighten up, Francis. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just lighten yeah, up. Hey, Just not watch it for what it is and enjoy it. Um, it's the one thing that brings me back to being a kid. And I, the, I have more good memories watching wrestling than – and it, it's – I've made friends out of watching wrestling. So, you know, as far as that goes. But, Tom, uh, what's your take on AEW before I take up this whole <laughs> – the whole episode talking about my thoughts on for a well, well, welcome to wrestling chat with AC. Yeah, yeah. Now it's that coming. now that they've built up all these guys and signed these guys, they're gonna have to keep them because from what I've read online, they make Kenny Omega is a free agent and in like what's uh I think they said November his contract comes up and they were supposedly WWE's pushing hard for him. So so when AEW started, I could see. Not because I'm a Cody guy or a Dusty guy. I could see why they grabbed Cody because he had some experience in personality, but yeah. experience in the WWE. You made guys, vice presidents, that never had even a, a cup of coffee mm -hmm. in the WWE. And if they were that good, they would have already been there because there were plenty of shitty guys that came through the WWE that only had a moment in time there, but they had been there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there's got to be something why those guys never went there and it's a bad attitude and they're not willing to listen. That's what I hear all the time about those guys is yeah. they, they have their own, you know, trampoline group of Southern California click and they get all those guys jobs like Rick Knox, the worst referee in wrestling. They have, <laughs> they have one of the best referees. Aubrey Edwards, and they have one of the worst referees I've ever seen. That Rick Knox is terrible, absolutely terrible. And uh, what about uh, Excalibur? Ed? What do you think about Excalibur as an announcer with his mask on? <laughs> I mean, why do we why do we need why do we need masks for announcers? I think it's ridiculous. I mean, come on. Yeah, how I mean, often are they on camera? <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, honestly, like, come on, man, like. I don't know. Maybe I'm just such a purist, and I'm just I don't know, man. Like, like looking back, and you look at the guys, like, and you look at the talent that has come through, and the, the guys. And this is circling back to what you said, Donald. Like these guys were really good on the mic, and they practiced it all the time. And like I, I can just say, like with like the promos and everything like that, the AEW cut. It's just like, okay, what do you like? Are you guys in high school? Like, cause it's just not even believable, you know. How about less promos and like, you know, put the guys that are good on the mic on the mic, like that's what they're there for. Just like the the MJF tirade that he went on there for ten minutes. I mean, that was probably one of the best promos that I've ever seen ever. I mean, like better than better than the time when Flair would go crazy in the ring or whatever. And you can, you know, that was on WCW on Nitro. And you go back and just type in on YouTube. When Flair goes crazy in the ring. I mean, that's that's <laughs> probably one of the best promos out there. The one you know, where you're sharpening the elbow. The, stuff from... the one where you're sharpening yeah. the elbow and he took his pants off and he had the Florida yes. Gator boxes on. That's the, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, they, they don't make them like I, that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not caring about. No, but what I'm saying is, is like, I, you know, but I'm saying this is like, I mean, that's a hell of a promo. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. Oh, like, yeah. the, you know, or like even when, even when the outsiders came out, you know, there we go, right there. Yeah, like yeah. you know, they could cut. But, they but that's been stolen too. too, with the Bullet Club. Yeah. That's been stolen too. Get your own shit. Yeah, come up with something cool, you know. Yeah, I just think that I, I just think that uh, you know, like I mean, with William Regal in there, you could tell he was trying to change the culture. Yeah, you know? and how did that work? That he was he's gone. Oh, no, he's well, back. Well. He's back with WWE. Yeah, yeah, you know so. That's Tom? my take on it, man. Oh. What do you got? Anything AEW nope. related? Nope. Keep going. Um, 
So what staying on, <laughs> stay, staying on the topic of uh, <laughs> the man of a lot of words, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> <Little clap. laughs> staying on the AEW uh topic and the wrestling topic uh i wanted to touch on it last week we're a little late to the party with uh the passing of leap and lenny poffo any any good memories of leap and lenny or just the other brother of the macho man <laughs> <laughs> Ed, and thoughts I, the genius a frisbee I, with a I, poem I, on it what do you got I mean, you know, no, unfortunately, I don't have a frisbee with a poem on it, you know. Um, I, I think that, you know, I mean. Fun fact, first guy to do with the moonsault. Before Moda. No, I know that. Yep, now you do. But I, will, but I will say, I mean, you know, the genius promo that he, that, you know, as the, the, his character slash gimmick and whatnot. I mean, it has legs, but it's really tough. I mean, if you, to, to hold up against Macho Man, I mean. Oh, you, you, well, you know. come on uh, i mean yeah, one I guy mean, one guy no charisma the other guy got all the charisma yeah I mean, you know i mean and so it's really tough for I me mean, but i mean there are there are a lot of guys in there that you know that had far better far better runs and other ones that didn't have as good a run so i mean you know i mean he was around for a long time you know and uh i don't think he he certainly didn't get over like some of the other guys did but i thought i mean you know who he is so know? They they had an outlaw promotion in the late seventies, ICW, that the old man yep. Angelo Poffo ran. I that was one of the territories I had never ever seen, but a lot of it's on YouTube now. So every once in a while, I'll I'll pop on something, and check it out. The Macho Man promos on there. If you haven't seen them, but an ICW Randy Savage, that is some over the top stuff with that guy. Talk about, uh, I don't know what kind of chemicals that guy was doing <laughs> at the time, but holy crap. Now I know why he wore those Oakley goggles so so much when he was in WWE. F, <laughs> WWF. <laughs> but, man, I if you ever Maybe get a the, chance. The World Wildlife Foundation? Yeah, oh yeah. Yep, yep, definitely. Tom, thoughts on Leap and Lenny? I think – he stuck around in the WWE or WWF for so long because I think they kept him because he could keep uh, his brother in check yeah. more better than they could. Yeah, Tom, yeah, yeah. Because Macho Man had a little bit of a, a temper on him. So yeah, I, I think so, too. I think I so, think... too. I mean, he was so – they always said the thing with him was his paranoia. Like, uh, everybody was out to get him. Everybody was out to get his spot. The stuff with Elizabeth, mm -hmm. you know. Um the thing that uh, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard that urban legend about uh, the story about Lenny Poffo that he could do that one trick. Did you ever hear about that? No. That he could uh, roll all the way back and take care of himself. You ever heard oh, that? Geez. Yeah. Nope. Can't say that. that again. <laughs> now you do. Because that was his thing when he used to go into a territory. Pat Patterson actually asked him if he could do that. And he said, yeah. And he's like, oh. I want to see it. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, that stuff don't fly anymore. That stuff does <laughs> not fly anymore. <laughs> so, um, I have nothing to say. Uh, we got uh, so many other things that uh, we want to talk about, but uh, time's uh, winding down. I already got the ticker. So, um, got anything you guys want to add going going into the trade deadline or uh, anything like that or just I think the trade deadline may be kind of boring this year all the trades have happened within the last week and a half two weeks uh I think Friday might be a boring day yeah yeah I usually try to uh stay on top of that all day just watching it to see a refresh 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 just to see if anything new happened but I don't know I unless the, you know, the Pat, other than the Patrick Kane thing, I don't know if anything else is going to happen. I, I heard maybe some Flyers movement, JVR maybe going today, or uh, I heard possibly Tony D'Angelo and maybe, but maybe even Provorov. But who knows? Nothing like uh, blowing up that team like to to smithereens where, uh, you know, they, they're actually I, – I can't believe I'm actually saying this. The, this first time in my life that they're actually – pretty much unwatchable there's like nothing going on you got no couturier Giroux's gone 
it, it, it's nothing other than Tortorella with his rants that that's entertaining. But other than that, I mean, you can watch just the sound bites of that the next day. I mean, I, I can't believe that they're this bad. I, I've never seen it. I, I mean, think that's half the reason why they got him. Got uh, the coach is because that they're going to suck so bad. Excuse me, yeah. but he uh, he's going to keep people watching because they never know what's going to come out of his mouth or what he's going to do on the bench. I mean, even like uh, the Flyers Carnival, they're having it again this year, and it's like, who do who do you go and see? Like, yeah, I mean, who do you go to see? Like two guys, and then wander around just getting, you know, journeyman the whole the whole time for autographs. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's I don't know, it's it's sad, but whatever. I mean, it's it's sports. It's something to talk about, and I guess that's why we're doing this stuff. So, Ed, you look uh, enthused. <laughs> I know I'm going to say Tommy on this one. All right, you Bruins honk. <laughs> <laughs> he's all in. He's all in right now. Yeah. Hey, man. He's all like, in. Look, I, he's like, hey, he's man. like me with Hextall in 87 right now. They're beating Edmonton. It's Stanley Cup or bust, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might not even make it out of the first round. The, the East is so hard this year. It's yeah, But it, even, even that playoff format, Tom, sucks. Yeah. Well, they're saying right now the, the playoff – matchups would be the same as it would be if it was the traditional one versus eight so i don't know but they they changed them oh yeah oh my god yeah oh yeah Yeah. gary bettman my guy you know when i when i was a kid i remember when they had ziegler and then people would always crap all over him this guy's a thousand times worse thousand Mm -hmm. times thousand times worse like give me john ziegler all day over this guy but anyways so uh we're gonna wrap it up this week and uh closing closing thoughts tom ed before we uh wind this one up i think we're gonna start hitting our groove yeah yeah we're working on it we're working on it hey when are you guys gonna get the power play together yeah we're working on it we're working working on it it. yeah bunch of shysters baby yeah dickie dunn wrote that Dickie Dunroy, it catches the spirit of the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, just just one thing. Hey, if you remember, 43 years ago, I believe it was uh, yep. Tuesday. Yep. Slap shot. Oh, well, yeah, slap shot. So, yep. yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Great movie, on. man. If you never seen it, watch it. You got to watch it, man. You got to watch it. So, with that one being best said, movies out there. we're going to wrap this up for Thomas and Ed. I'm AC, and we're out for another hey. week. Later.